What's up guys? Brad here from Piney Grove Homestead. And what we're trying to do in today's video is finish up this French drain on this side of the house. In the last video or in a previous video, we did the one that's behind me. And uh, we have some lessons learned from that. Yesterday, I used the excavator to break out the dirt here, but I didn't want to dig too much because I found that I was actually shoveling the dirt back into the first basin. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent the water coming off the dormer on the house up here. As it comes around that dormer, it rushes down the side of the roof and then it comes off in two places. We addressed one place in the last video. And in this video, we're gonna address this one. I broke this out yesterday with the excavator and I left a lot of shovel work. Cause I think by breaking out too much with the excavator, I'm just gonna have to backfill it. I've got the pipe two 10 foot pieces, and then a piece of perforated pipe that we'll put at the end by the pop-up. And then I got the plastic and the railroad ties already pre-cut here. And this is what it'll look like when it's done, is there's the basin in there, but it's eight foot by 30 inches away from the foundation. That pipe comes down here under this dirt and then comes to this pop-up valve right here. And I've got that marked with that orange fiberglass pole because yesterday when I was straddling it to back blade the trench, I actually kind of ran over it a little bit with the front tires. Not completely, I didn't break anything, but that's gonna be something because that pipe is not buried very deep. The only thing that's gonna be able to traverse in this area is gonna be like a zero turn or maybe my tractor as long as I don't run over the pop-up there. But that's what we're trying to mimic over here. So let's get started. So we ran into a little problem. What I did is underneath that eight foot railroad tie, I packed underneath of it, but that actually has to come forward because it's gonna be in front of the 30 inch pieces. So I'm missing probably about a foot of dirt. So I'm gonna go over to our shooting berm and grab some dirt and put here, probably need a bucket or two. But uh, yeah, this, is, this isn't this is gonna be quick and easy like I thought it would be. So what I'm talking about is this railroad tie has to go on the outer edge of that, not butt it up the way it is. If you look over there to that one, you see how it is. This needs to go outside here and I have no dirt. This drops off right here and I need a good foot of dirt. So I need to put dirt all along here and repack that out. So off to get some dirt. See that dirt has a different consistency. This is red clay fill dirt that was put in here, real clean. It might have even been screeded, but that's just raw pond dirt that we dug from our pond to make that shooting berm. So it's gonna be different to work with. It should pack well because it's clay. It's just not gonna feather out like that red dirt because it's not uh it's not dry for one, and then two, it's got just a different clay content to it. Like it is not absolutely perfect, but it's probably better than the than this house is built. Pretty close. So I got the box all formed and I got some good clay that we brought from the shooting range out there and packed down. You saw that in the video where I packed it with the tractor tire. So I feel like we've got this stabilized pretty well, but I couldn't reconfigure the dirt that was in here. I didn't have enough. So back on the back of the property, we have kind of a sandy hill that I've gotten some fill dirt from before. So I went ahead and got a bucket of fill dirt. So I'm gonna use that to just kind of make this um, all bevel towards like right about here, just like the other one. And uh, then we can start putting in the pipe.
we're at the end of the 20 foot sewage and drain pipe and now we want to put a short length of this perforated pipe so that as water comes down from the basin up there it'll pop this pop up up and water will disperse but a certain amount of water after the rain is stopped is going to get trapped in this elbow so this is basically to drain the pipe and drain the elbow so we don't have standing water in there for mosquitoes and those type of things we're going to do 20 inches because that's in between the holes right here Hopefully this perforated pipe will fit inside of this bell right here. And it does nicely. And we do the pop up. Okay, now I'll put a level across here so that I get this perfect with the top of the ground. So when the pop up comes up, the water will go down the hill. Okay, so the bottom of the level is the top of the ground. So I want this up about like that. I don't want to cover these holes under there. I'm going to put some rock under there so those holes can weep down into the sand. So I'm going to support it back here on the bell end. Okay, that's pretty good. I got the pipe the way I want it, sticking up just a little there. Now I got to backfill the pipe. Progress is slow, but we're making progress. Let me show you where we're at. So we got the basin in and we got the side sloped, all that clay packed around where the pipe goes. And it's a pretty steep drop coming off here. Camera probably doesn't pick it up, but I'd say we're looking at three feet or more from this railroad tie to that pop-up. Well, the pop-up's not on right now. But I got this back filled by hand. As usual, when you dig with an excavator, you dig too deep. And I knew I had to just barely scratch the surface, but still uh, the pipe probably had three inches under it that I had to backfill. But I got it all in here. It's barely underground. Like when we put sod over this, like I could probably scratch with my foot and the pipe's only down like under an inch of dirt because of this extreme slope. So on the terminal end here, I've dug out a basin and I got to go screed some rocks to fill in that basin. And that's so those holes right there will drain into those rocks. And then I'll put plastic over top of it and backfill it with dirt. And then here's the pop-up, the pop-up just does that under water pressure and then it'll suck back down. So that'll sit there like that. The water will disperse all out here. That's uphill to the mega shed. So that water is gonna end up going downhill. I don't know if you can see if it's downhill. If you'll see the red flag over there, there's a pop-up by that fiberglass pole right about there, I think. That's one pop-up. Have this pop-up right here. Between those two pop-ups, those that will catch all that water coming off the roof, at least on the dormer side, and send it on down the hill. So now I'm putting down some plastic so that the water will go through the rocks, hit the plastic and go to the drain. This is actually leftover plastic from doing the concrete slab on the mega shed. I don't know the mills on it, but it's pretty thick. So I think it'll last a long time, if not forever. One thing that makes this job really easy is this electric stapler. And this is just a Craftsman, very cheap one. It was probably 15 years old. I don't know, maybe it's 20 bucks, 30 bucks but it works great. So one of these you don't use very often, but when you need it, it makes the job go a lot quicker. All right, I got this plastic liner in here. It took a little bit longer than I wanted to because uh, I didn't cut it properly, but let's hope this part goes easier. X cut or T cut in the plastic here. So it's not gonna seal perfectly. This is not a shower basin. And if a little water goes into that soil under there that's okay we're all set ready for rock so in order to fill that basin i need one bucket of river rock and i got some river rock here from a previous project but it's got a lot of fines or small material in it and i don't want that getting in there and clogging that drain so i've got this screed and it's a homemade screed and we've got another video out and i'll link it up here i'm going to screed it work pretty good for the other basin we're going to fill up this bucket we should have enough rock and then we can uh, keep progressing with this project Get some of these clean rocks down here. Put it back together.
Okay guys, I got this wrapped up. I got that stone in there and spread out and the rest of it graded. But like a blister, Miss Piney Grove showed up after the work was done. Say hi, babe. Hello. <laughs> she doesn't have a mic, so you can't hear her. But let's uh, take a quick look at the finished job here. We got the basin with the rock. And I marked with a flag the pipe here, just in case like a concrete truck or something comes by. And then at the end, at the pop-up, I've got this fiberglass rod. But that's gonna do it for today's video. That was the second basin I've put in this weekend. And even though I learned a little bit from the first one, it still took a long time on the second one. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. That'll really help out our channel. And comment down below, we'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, that's all I've got. So until the next video, take care out there, y'all.